Forests are the lungs of the earth. Over millions of years, trees have turned carbon dioxide into oxygen, creating the atmosphere we have today. This cycle is changing fast. Earth's carbon sinks are being emitted back into the atmosphere as the harmful gas carbon dioxide. Trees play the role in turning this CO2 into oxygen and storing some of the harmful carbon right here in the trunk. This is what gives Earth its life-sustaining atmosphere and climate. Problem is, all over the world, our forests are being depleted at an enormous rate. Even here in Ireland, our landscapes were once covered in dense woodland. And yet, we're still the least forested country in Europe. What's left of the lungs of the earth are mainly in developing countries, where international regulation is insufficient to protect these old growth forests from very rapid destruction. Ireland imports hundreds of millions of euro worth of timber products every year, and too much of this is from illegally and unsustainably logged rainforest. We're effectively subsidizing the destruction of the forests that literally give us the air we breathe and sustains our climate. The good news is we can replace most of these imports with our own resource while creating thousands of local jobs. This program will explore the problems, the pitfalls, the growth and opportunity of Ireland's forestry future. It's estimated that Ireland imports over 30 million euro worth of illegally sourced wood products every year, making us one of the biggest importers of unsustainable timber. Tom, can you tell us about why you brought us to this particular building here in Tullamore? The local authority here became the first local authority in Ireland to have formally adopted a responsible timber purchasing policy. And what that means is that the local authority would give preference to a locally produced timber and B, FSC certified timber. A year later, after adopting this policy, they built this fabulous building here and they used, as you can see, African Iroko in the cladding on the exterior. It's not FSC certified. And as far as uh, I'm concerned, the uh, impacts of bad forest management of illegal logging has devastating impacts on communities, ecology, wildlife in the regions that this wood comes from. And I could give you numerous examples of public buildings that are have been built and using um, timber that comes from very questionable sources. And if you move from that from, say, public buildings, you know, like and local authorities and semi-state and all of these, what about the commercial sector? And even what about our homes? Right. Is there a lot of this tropical hardwood timber being used in Ireland that is not FSC certified? Yes, and in particular flooring. Flooring is a huge uh, volume of wood used in this country. Also, garden furniture, decking for piers, and all of the, a lot of this is, is, is made from tropical wood. And most, if not all, is coming from very questionable sources. Have we got the species here in Ireland to do all of these things. We started dealing in tropical woods because we thought we didn't have enough of our own. But now we have quite a substantial forest cover. We are producing more woods that would do the same work as this, and a better quality, and it's cheaper. Offaly County Council claim that they made all efforts to source sustainable timber. As an architect, I've designed large timber buildings for 40 years and have never had a problem with only sourcing sustainably certified Irish or European timber products. What you see behind me is not an exception. It's happening wide scale across the country, not just in public buildings, but in so many of our commercial buildings and in our homes also. When you look at that wood used there, tropical hardwood, that's not sustainable, the damage it's doing to wildlife and to habitats and in terms of carbon emissions is massive. 
but at the same time, it is depriving Ireland of vast numbers of jobs that would be doing good for this country instead of that money going into doing vast amounts of damage. The value of Irish oak used in British ships and buildings and the forest clearances for cultivation and burning meant that by 100 years ago, our forests were decimated to less than 1% of land cover. Since the 1940s, we started to replant and have achieved almost 11% of forest cover today. We have a target to meet of 17% by 2030, but with reducing levels of afforestation, we are already falling way short of this. Most Irish timber today comes from state-owned forests. I'm off to Portumna to see what benefits these forests provide. Hi, Dahi. Hi, Duncan. How Good are to see you? you? You're welcome to Portumna Forest Park. Lovely. Great to be down here. Tell yeah. us a bit about it. Well, Portumna Forest Park, as you can see from the map board and our information here, provides a huge amount for uh, walking and cycling. Uh, here in East Galway. These are all tracks, are they? These are all tracks and trails right around the uh, Forest Park, which we upgraded about four years ago. And uh, our visitor use here has increased substantially over the last few years. So it's great to see so many people coming and using the uh, park for walking and cycling. And you've got the lake just beside you also. Yes, indeed. Fantastic. We've got some lovely trails down along the lake shore as well, which we might go and have a look at. Right, will we do that? Certainly. So typically, if you take all of the parks in, in Ireland, you get how many, do you say 11 of them nationally? We have 11 forest park. parks across the country, but we have 180 formal recreation sites right across the country as These well. These are forests, just forests? General forests, uh, forests which we manage uh, for timber crops, uh, but we also have waymarked recreation routes in the forests, and we provide lots of visitor information uh, about how to access those forests and where to go. What about the health benefits? The health benefits are something that we're just starting in Quilchen now to measure as well. And obviously there are substantial health benefits. We can see now the uptake of jogging, running and especially cycling. And we see all of that translate to much greater use of Quilchen's forests right across the country. We have measured it at over 18 million visits per annum. 18 to million? State forests, 18 million wow. visits per annum. So it's a substantial amount. And indeed, that brings us to the whole economic benefits of uh, forest recreation in Ireland. And there's a public good value that you can attach to that, where you can measure the benefit uh, for forest recreation and actually put a figure on that. And that figure is nearly 100 million euros of public good benefit. So without now the commercial timber that you get in your forests, would all of this amenity be, be accessible? Well, it's very important to understand, I suppose, that the recreational access that we provide is something that, uh, that we actively manage. So there is a cost attaching to that as well. And without the commercial aspects of the, the forest industry that we, we manage, the recreational access wouldn't be possible. And the two of them dovetail quite comfortably together. So is this now a typical area that would be Clearfeld? Yes, this is an area where we're close to the lakeshore here and this is a stand of Norway spruce that's approaching its Clearfell age of about 42 or 43 years. So this will be Clearfelled uh, in time and we'll open up more vistas to the lakeshore below us and uh, it will be replanted then. Um, we so this is really a commercial value in here? Exactly, this but, is the commercial aspect yeah. of forestry here. But still the area. public can walk through this and enjoy it, so it's amenity and commercial both working together. Exactly. So you must love your work, Dahi. Yes, uh, it's a very enjoyable, very rewarding uh, work uh, in the whole area of recreational trail development and, uh, and recreation management. And as you can see here in Portumna Forest Park, we're able to very carefully balance the commercial aspects of what we do, the recreational ac access and the landscape value that you can see here along the lakeshore. It's clear that having our own forest resource has lots of benefits. But is there an economic case for a major expansion in the private sector? I'm on my way to a mature forest near Tullamore. That's actually a private pension fund scheme. 
This is a good place to find out if commercial interests conflict with sustainability issues. Donald, this Norway spruce here, how old is that and how much is it worth? This Norway spruce is about 28 years old and at the moment it's worth around about 30 euro. That's not very much, is it, after nearly 30 years of age? Well, you, you, you have to look at the area. For an acre, it would be worth, at clear fell time, at felling time, it's worth around about 10,000 euro per acre. So the value of it grows, and that will happen in about 15 years, as I say. When you talk about FSC certification, what's, what's involved in that? To get FSC certification, you have to show that you manage your woodlands according to good economic principles, particularly good environmental principles and social principles as well. So effectively, what we do here is we try and encourage biodiversity. Our felling areas are not too large. Any interesting species, we try and preserve them. We manage it with an eye to the environment and with an eye, obviously, because at the end of the day, the owner also has to generate some income because it's equally important that a forest is economically sustainable. The forest behind me, We've had a number of tinnings out, and of course there's revenue generated from that. But more importantly, the end felling. That's where a lot of the revenue is generated. When we look at big machinery working in a forest like this, harvesting mature trees, we think of damage being done. But in fact, this is the most critical stage in sustainability. It's the economic stage. This is where the resource produces timber that makes this whole forest here happen. This has been felled only this summer uh, and autumn. And what we intend to do here is replant this area. So this will be effectively a young forest again. What we've done to try and preserve the biodiversity of this area and also to preserve the wildlife is we've retained the woodlands all around us here. You see a lot of broad leaves, but more than that, particularly interesting, we've retained an area of sequoia and hemlock behind us there. And the idea of that is to be, if you like, a sort of a wildlife refuge, because obviously the red squirrels we had on the site had to move somewhere. They've moved into the surrounding area, but hemlock in particular is a good food source for squirrel, as is the Norway spruce and other species behind us. So that's where they'll move. It all adds to the biodiversity. And of course, the forest here, it's a young forest, it's growing rapidly, it's fixing a lot of carbon. And why, for example, should a farmer that has a forest, why should he certify his? What's the attractive aspect of it? The, the attractive aspect is that when it comes to market the timber, all of the larger sawmills require certified timber. And I think it's, it's good for forestry because what it allows a forest manager like myself and a forester like myself to do is to actually demonstrate that we are looking after the, the forests of Ireland, that we do manage according to sustainable forest management and good environmental principles. Donal has proved to me that sustainability and economic progress can complement each other when properly thought through and managed. I'm going to follow this truck to find out why European buyers only want sustainable PEFC or FSC certified timber. So can you describe the whole process here from when the round log comes in here in a truck? Yeah, so we're taking the logs from throughout Ireland, we're bringing them in here in the lorries, processing through our grading line, which grades the logs by diameter, and we bring them through the sawmill, we process them. Out of that we get the timber for carcassing, timber for pallet, timber for fencing and timber for decking. We also get the co-products, the residual products, which will be chips, sawdust, bark. The centrepiece that would go on for further processing would be the carcassing construction material. And it, uh, you can see in the background there, it is an X-ray grading machine, which was the first of its kind in Ireland. And it grades it for density and knot area ratio. So it looks at the number of knots in the timber. 
And we also on that, we have a module regarding the moisture content. So we're able to see the moisture in every single piece. So we're able to reject it both on grade and on moisture. And where does that timber go to? One third domestic market and two thirds export. So since the downturn in 2007, how is your business working out? Well, I'm glad to say because of the export markets, we actually have actually hired people and we've increased our outputs since the downturn. And how many people would you employ in total between the two plants? Between the two plants, uh, in total 300. Um, that includes direct and indirect. Direct jobs would be 150. For the private growers now, you know, with certification, FSC certification, in terms of sustainably managed forestry, is that now becoming important? For us, it's paramount importance. I wouldn't be able to export any timber to the UK without FSC certification. So what's special now about the timber that you produce here? We're turning an Irish sustainable natural resource into a globally traded international commodity. We're competing on Irish domestic markets, UK markets and in the continent. And we've even got inquiries from the eastern seaboard of the United States. So if you look at the whole cycle here from growing trees in the forest, the whole managing of it, the harvesting, and then into the sawmilling, processing, everything. How many people, what's the size of this particular industry? Well, people, there's 12,000 people employed in that industry, and it's generating 2.2 billion to the, industry, to the Irish economy annually. 2.2 billion, that's incredible. So when you look at all of the energy that goes into the products, how sustainable is your timber? Well, what's very important with timber these days is the carbon footprint, and Irish timber, so locally has a lower carbon footprint than obviously timber brought from Sweden, US, wherever. So uh, for lower carbon footprint, it's better to buy local. It's great to see these positive jobs being created from our timber exports. But sorting out our domestic market should also be a top priority. We bought this plywood from a large hardwood chain here in Ireland, and it's made in China. And the the hardwood that's used on the plywood comes from Papua New Guinea. We checked it. Now that's not sustainably forest management and it's not certified as FSC. On top of that, the quality of the plywood is very poor. It's delaminating. Yet at the same time, we've got some very good Irish produced products that are giving good employment, used from Irish thinning from our forests and they're cheaper than this poor quality product. Medite MDF, together with Smartply OSB, are two Irish companies that produce imaginative quality board products out of sustainable Irish timber. I'm on my way to Smartply in Waterford to learn more. Oh, Neil, good to see you. Good to see you too. Same yeah. to you, yeah, wonderful. Good. Beautiful day for this, Fantastic, isn't it? Fantastic, yeah. Are you all set to head up the log yard? I am. I'd love to see the timber first, if I could, the logs, maybe. The PPE on your oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Timber that we're seeing here today and the timber we're processing today would have been planted in the late 80s and perhaps in, into the 90s. Spruce and pine, mainly. All thinning, um, is but, it? You know, all thinnings, first, second thinnings, um, some tops of trees that came from Clearfell. We can see some of the larger trees down around us here that are would have been edge trees that are very, very rough and, and can't be processed for sawmilling. It's kind of low quality wood in a way, yeah. is it? Yeah, it's, it would have been traditionally regarded as low value, low quality. You know, pretty astute investment now, it turns out, um, with the passing of time, because there's a strong demand for this type of timber for MDF manufacture in our Medite plant, OSB manufacture here in Smartply, but also from the energy sector. Um, which is increasingly using this type of timber for the generation of energy from biomass. So how do you make OSB from all of this timber, Neil? Well, once the logs enter the plant, um, they're quickly debarked, then sliced up by the waferizing process, dried, and the adhesive then is added through the blending process. The farming has taken place up here, and what, we're, and what you're now looking at is the flake after it's been dried, with the resin added, and now it's in its loose form, but ready to go into the press. Right, and how big are these panels? They're eight foot wide and 24 foot long. Right, okay. And they're gonna move into the press in front of us here, 14 panels at a time for pressing. The only thing with times the cost of MDF to produce. Oh, really? For an Irish company to compete in European markets, we need to have unique selling points. So David, what innovative products have you got here? Dunk, I'll just show you uh, three of our latest uh, new products here that we've brought to market recently. This here is a product called Cyprotect, which is a value-added surface product. It's a coated product, which is sealed on the face and all around the edges. And it's used predominantly in site hoarding. Uh, it's carbon neutral. 
And that enabled us to get the product specified for the London, London Olympics. Exclusively? Exclusively. Really? Yes. And what's this one here? This one here is a product called Medite Trochoia, which is a modified MDF product, which is very uh, dimensionally stable and extremely durable. It's a class one durability product. Here is a sample that we have that has been soaked in water for over two years. And as you can see, if you turn it to the side, it's still floating to the surface, which means it hasn't taken on water. So it's a very, very dimensionally stable and durable and water resistant product. For outdoor use? For outdoor use. Incredibly good. So how does your OSB now compare with imported plywoods that are coming into Ireland? I get extremely angry and extremely frustrated when I look at plywood being used in applications in many cases, you know, in important jobs around the southeast, around our capital city. Plywood that has come from overseas in many cases is of poor quality and um, in most cases is of dubious sustainability. And when you, can th when you think that a product that can do the same job is certified, has guaranteed quality and is competitively priced, is available in Ireland supporting Irish jobs, you know, it is frustrating. And is all your timber now FSC certified in terms of sustainably managed forestry? All of our products here in Medite and Smartply are FSC certified, which is absolutely vital for the markets that we're playing in because it is, you know, the, the recognised number one independent stamp of sustainability for forest products today. So much revenue in exports does this bring into Ireland from both your plants? Well, in 2011, our um, turnover was 150 million. As I said, over 90% of that was exported. That's a substantial amount of export revenue in the order of 140 million, the vast majority of which is spent here in the Irish economy. So it's a really great success story um, for an Irish raw material, sustaining, as I already said, uh, hundreds of jobs here in the local economy. You know, Duncan, I think it's a, it's a type of business that this country needs more of. There's an unlimited global demand for timber and forest products into the future, and it's clear that Ireland can benefit. But the only bottleneck will be the supply of new forest plantations, which take time to grow. About 20% of Ireland's land is marginal land and unsuitable or unproductive for farming. And very often this land is left abandoned with no income from it. And farmers that own this land could convert it into forestry, getting an income. But it would also build up a massive resource for Ireland, for timber and energy crops, and at the same time, store carbon from the atmosphere. I'm off to the Sleeve Blue Mountains to meet a local farmer and find out how viable planting a forest really is. James, what are you farming here? I'm farming mainly cattle and sheep and a few horses, apart from the forestry. I have about a third of the farm in forestry, about 65 acres. And when did you plant this? This was planted in 1988. Hey, and at the time, was this, were you quite unusual now to be putting a private plantation in? I like was, this? yeah. I was probably uh, one of the few that, that were planting, doing private forestry at that time. You know, it was so new. So James, how's this worked out financially for you? It has worked out very well because we get, we get a thinning about every three years out of it. I've started my first thinning here at, when it was 13 years old. And uh, we're very, very fortunate in that I'm surrounded by sawmills and uh, steak mills. So it's very easy to get the premium price for your product because they're so close. So it has brought in a very, very good income. And of course now these particular trees here, these are 24 years old, yeah. when will they be mature enough to, to, for, for timber? They will be mature enough now in about five years time for saw log, and will which that will be, be clear fell. Clear fell. The, the bigger it grows, the more valuable it is up to a certain point. So like at five, about five years time it will be at its maximum value right. uh, per cubic metre. So really this is going to be a great resource? It will be a great resource, yeah. Really it, it, I look at it as a pension. Were you happy that you did this? The only regret I would have is that I didn't plant sooner. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So really, for land like this, yeah. this is really the best thing. It's ideal. It's ideal. I think it's, it's pure waste leaving land that isn't producing a valuable crop, uh, you know, in the line of livestock or whatever, leaving it idle. If we want to protect biodiversity, conserve natural resources and maintain our climate, we need to greatly expand our forest cover. We need to ensure that we only use sustainably certified timber and we need to find long-term uses of wood to lock up carbon from the atmosphere. By doing this, 
we'll be providing many critically important social, environmental and economic benefits for our society into the future.